Hey, God bless you, family. Welcome back to The Blaze. It's your brother once again, DJ Sam Rock, right here at soulwinnerswithaz.org. Check us out on the TuneIn app, Spreaker, Stitcher, um, iTunes, TuneIn, um, also on the iHeartRadio app as well. And all the five major social media networks, you know, like Facebook, Tumblr, Pinterest, um, all over the networks and Twitter, amen, and um, MySpace, and all the networks that you can find my links, click onto them and share them and let people know about the Blaze Bible Study. 25 minute, 25 minute to 30 minute Bible Study every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But it's okay if you can't catch me live because if you can't, most of my listeners on iHeartRadio and all the platforms, they catch it whenever it's best for them. Amen. So it's okay if you can't catch it live. It turns into a podcast and you could catch it anytime um, to your convenience, at your convenience. Amen. So tonight we're going to be talking about some Uber confessions. Yeah, Uber. Um, I don't know if you know anything about Uber, but I, I drive Uber on the weekends, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays sometimes. And I do it late night. Um, and there's confessions that happen in the back seat of the people who hire me to Uber. You know, it's like a share ride. It's not taxi cab because I'm not a taxi cab driver, but it's share a ride. And you have an Uber app. You get the app and then in your area, if it's if Uber is available, you just hire and get a ride from your app. And then somebody comes pick you up in their own vehicle. It's usually clean. At least it's hopefully it's clean, right? Clean vehicle, smells good, and you get a, a, a live person. And, and my experience so far, I've been doing it for a couple of months. Um, there's just automatic confessions that happen. Amen. I remember my first time um, doing an Uber. I just wanted to try it out. And I went, I picked up a young man and he just confessed. He says, I don't know why I'm doing this. It was late at night. He was at an adult um, gentleman's club. It was a Sunday night and he was at a, a gentleman's club and he was uh, intoxicated a little bit, you know, intoxicated and he immediately got in the front seat and just looked at me. And without hesitation, he said, I don't know why I'm doing this. And then he went on to say his story about, you know, he's inheriting a business and uh, his dad is going to give it to him and this, that, and the third. And by the time it was all said and done, got him to his place where he lived. And I had an opportunity to speak life into his situation because the confessions, um, when you confess your sins, um, usually we should do it to God first, but he did not know that format. He did not know that, um, order. So he confessed to a complete stranger, not knowing that I was connected to the Christ that can save him, connected to Jesus, a Christian, a Christ follower. So I listened and then I spoke back words of life. Amen. So Uber confessions just reminded me that confession in general, amen, according to the scriptures, we confess sin to God first, for only God can forgive sin. <clears throat> Amen. So let's pray, and we're going to get into this um, series on confession. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, because you are awesome and great in all your ways, Lord God. Um, keeping me safe in the Uber rides at night, Lord God, and allow me to be a minister of hope for your kingdom's sake, to be a listening ear to all those um, that travel from point A to point B. Thank you for protecting me, guiding me, guarding me, and having a, a wife that prays for me through the night for my safety as well, Lord God. And I thank you for everyone out there that has ridden with me, amen, and had not known that I was a Christian, but have seen and sensed the difference in the atmosphere in that vehicle that I drive, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that every single listener, Lord God, as they confess their sins, Lord God, as they confess to you, Lord Jesus, that you will, according to your word, forgive their sin and they will be made right standing with you through the, through the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray a blessing over every single listener, increase supernaturally, physically, emotionally, um, and always in all their days, Lord God, that you would just reveal yourself to us tonight and reveal yourself to all those who who will listen to these Bible studies. We need a fresh anointing. We need a fresh word from you tonight. And I pray for victorious angels, their way, archangel angels and ministering angels, their way, and in my way too. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen. Amen. So who do you confess your sins to? 
Do you confess to God or you confess to others? Now, the reason why I bring this up is because people, um, when they see strangers and when maybe they're under the influence of alcohol or some kind of drug or, or they're just out there, as I do late night Ubering, you know, I'm talking about until two, three, four in the morning, amen, and they're out there. And there's people who are lost, people who are uh, Christians but have kind of lost their way in their path right now. People who I know, people who I don't know, mostly I don't know them. Um, but even the ones I, I catch up with that I do know, amen, there's always an exchange of words of encouragement. Even though there might be a state and a state that many will probably judge, amen, but I'm not there to judge. I'm there to Uber, bring people from point A to point B safely, amen. But in that time of confession, in that time that you hear the confessions, it reminds me that God should get the confessions first. And if you don't believe in God, that's why you don't know to confess to God first and you confess to others. But it's okay because by the time this Bible study is over, we'll get the order. So we confess sin to God first, for only God can forgive sin. You ever heard it? someone say, well, you can't judge me, only God could judge me. And that's true, God will judge you. But also, when you're talking about forgiveness and confession, only God can forgive your sin. Not man, but God. The Bible says in Ezra chapter 10, verse 11, Confess your sin to the Lord, the God of your ancestors, and do what he demands. Separate yourselves from the people of the land and from these pagan women. Amen. So there must be a type of separation. When you confess your sins to God, you are on your way to cleansing. You are on your way to victory. You are on your way to a breakthrough. You are on your way to elevation. Amen. Because God knows your heart and he knows my heart. So he says, confess your sin to the Lord, the God of your ancestors, and do what he demands. Separate yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. The Bible says, separate Christ in your heart. Amen. Separate yourselves from the people of the land and from these pagan women. Amen. In other words, don't surround yourselves and confess all the time to the same maybe pagan sinners or your friends that they really don't want the good for you. They just want you to you know, hang out with them and kind of like misery loves company type deal. But God wants you to separate yourself. Amen. Because he knows that he's the only one that can forgive sin. First Chronicles, first Chronicles chapter 21, verse eight says, then David said to God, I have sinned greatly and shouldn't have taken the census. Please forgive me for doing this foolish thing. David knew that he needed to go to God. He needed to confess to God. He needed to admit that he sinned greatly and asking God for forgiveness for what he has done. Verse 9, Then the Lord spoke to Gad, David's seer. This was the message. Go and say to David, This is what the Lord says. I will give you three choices. Choose one of these punishments, and I will do it. And it goes on. If you continue to read First Chronicles chapter 21, a crazy story of what happens when David confesses and then it goes along the lines of what David does um, and it's just an amazing story. Remember David, King David in the Bible, he, he was a murderer, adulterer, He, you name it, he probably did it. But yet God says that David was a man after his own heart. Why? I believe because God, he kept, he kept himself vulnerable and he confessed and he repented. And he knew to go to God for what mess he got himself into. Amen. So no one is uh, needs to be perfect. No one needs to be at some level or whatever for you to connect with God. Connecting with God through prayer. Connecting with God through confession. Connecting with God through his word, of course. Amen. Puts you on a platform. Puts you in a in a place or gives you an opportunity to receive forgiveness and receive blessing. And then you get the elevation. Amen. James chapter 5, verse 16. This is a powerful scripture. It's quoted so many times when it comes to healing and confessing sin. It can be healing to confess sin, right, to one another. Especially if the others are committed to praying for you. That's why it's important who to confess to. Are they committed? Are they, are they on your side? Are they 
uh, wanting your well-being? Are they looking after you? It could be healing to confess sin to one another, but it'll call, it could also be dangerous to confess sin to someone who, you know, doesn't want you um, to rise up, who doesn't want you to succeed. So, if someone is willing to pray for you, and others are committed to pray for you, they're committed to encourage you, they're committed to support you, and they want you to seek restoration, then those are the people you should confess your sin to. It is also important to confess sin to those whom you have wronged. And that's tough for me. I know that's tough for you. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's easy for you to do that. But if you feel like you did something wrong to someone, we need to confess that to the people. I've done it in the past, haven't done it lately, and I probably need to do do it again. Amen? Because uh, it's so freeing. But the word says in James chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. You see that? Don't just confess and leave it there. Pray for one another. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and wonderful results. That's the promise of God. That is the the format, amen, that God is instructing his people, his children. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. That's a beautiful thing when that happens. You just see the, the hand of God all over those situations when that happens. So the question is, does God truly forgive sin when we confess it to him? Do you think God truly forgives sin when you confess it to him? Amen. I know for sure that when you confess your sin to someone other than God, amen, it's not an, a guarantee that you'll be forgiven. It's not a guarantee that that confession will stay there. Now, sometimes a confession, we say, hey, this is between me and you. And by the time the end of the week is is up, um, 10 people know about what you just confessed um, to a friend that you confided with someone. Psalm 32 verse 5 says like this. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide them. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Imagine that. Imagine that. Because you know with sin comes a feeling of guilt. So imagine finally coming to a place when you confess all your sins to God. Stop trying to hide your sin because God sees all of them. The ones underneath the cover. God sees all of that. Amen. So I don't know why I'm about to say this, but this is for somebody listening. Do you think because you're in the dark in a room under a cover with someone else hiding and no one knows, but God could see that? I really, really, really will suggest to you stop and think about this scripture. Stop and finally come to a place where you confess all your sin. Stop trying to hide it because God knows that you're in rebellion. God knows that he has your forgiveness in his hand, but you just have to stop hiding your sin. Confess all your sins to God. And guess what? He will forgive you. And then the guilt that you lived with all this time until the time when you say, you know what, I'm going to confess all that time or all that guilt, that guilt will be gone. That guilt will be gone. Amen? Because where sin comes a feeling of guilt. It's part of the baggage that sin brings. Sin, sin brings death. Sin brings guilt. Sin brings separation from God. Sin brings disease. You know, I heard a gospel rapper earlier today, and he hit me with a quote, and it's interesting. He said the, the first sin that Adam and Eve did was a sin caused... Um, that was spread through an STD. In other words, he was trying to say sexually transmitted disease was the sin because they were together. Remember the first husband and first wife? And then there was a temptation. Interesting thought, interesting concept, amen, of how he delivered that um, rap song. It's an amazing thing. Had they confessed, amen, to God, instead of doing the blame game, it was her, it was him, had they confessed, this whole thing would have been different. I think it would have been different, right? Had they confessed, they tried to hide. Remember, they, they covered them, their nakedness. And then God said, who, who told you you were naked? Because they try to hide. Once you start sinning, you feel guilt. Then you start trying to hide stuff. But the baggage of sin brings so much. 
And the Bible says sin even leads to death. But God wants us to live. First John chapter 1 verse 9. But if we confess our sins to him, God, Jesus, he is faithful and just. God is not a fair God per se, but God is definitely a just God. Is it fair that God um, uh, doesn't hear prayer because your prayers are hindered because you're not in right standing with God? You're not in right standing with your spouse? You're, you're in sin? Is it fair that God doesn't hear your prayer or is it just that God doesn't hear your prayer. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from every wrong. Not just one wrong, but every wrong. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar. We are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. That's something that, wow, that's a powerful scripture. That's verse 9 and 10. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John verses, chapter 1 verses 9 and 10 I read there. Powerful scripture that throws me back all the time that I see it. Every time that I read it. It's powerful like that. So ultimately, everyone will confess Jesus as Lord. Right? I always say that in my Bible studies. You know, you could go, you can confess Jesus as Lord willingly. Or kind of like. Be forced to do it at the end time because the Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Every tongue will make a confession. Amen. That Jesus is Lord. But someday, uh, will it be too late to receive his forgiveness at that day when you have to bow your knee and confess? I think so. I think there's going to come a day where, you know, Jesus has extended his message, his love, his grace, his kindness. His church has reached out to you. Um, angels have spoken to you, literally. And all this has happened. God has performed miracles in your life, um, has shown you his word is true and everything. But yet, there's still going to be people that still reject him. There's still going to be people that deny him. There's still going to be people that don't want to follow uh, the ways of the Lord. They want to follow the ways of man. And the wages of sin, the Bible says, is death. But the gift of life is eternal life through Christ Jesus, the Savior of the world. So someday, every person that you know, that you don't know, your family, your relatives, everybody that's not related to you, you know, every gender, every nationality, every tribe, every tongue, someday everyone will bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what the word says. I believe it. I feel it in my spirit that this is going to happen. Well, Uber Confessions. Um, I picked up uh, two women. They were leaving out of a bar and they were having their own discussion in the back because that's what they could do. You know, I'm just a driver. And immediately the one said, what's up with that Mormon? How could that Mormon lady be a flat out Mormon and just come out with her faith? You know, she's open with her faith and that... That, that open with her faith thing reminded me of that some people are open with their uh, transgender uh, lifestyle or their homosexual lifestyle. They're open with that. And I was like, wow, isn't that a flip? This Mormon was open. She was an open Mormon, confessed to be a Mormon, right? And that's a religion um, that has some um, godliness but no power in it, uh, according to the scriptures. But she was a Mormon and she was an open Mormon. And this lady said, well, I'm an open atheist, you know, and it took everything out of me to not say anything, not to mind my business, and not say anything and keep driving. So I'm an atheist, and but yet she's open and I'm open. So I can't believe she's spreading this Mormonism and talking to us like this. And all the lady chimed in and they were just putting this lady under the bus. But according to the scriptures that we're going to read, even the atheist lady is going to bow her knee and confess that Jesus is Lord. As soon as they got out, I prayed for her life, the atheist and her friend. And I prayed that God would reveal himself to them. That they would have an encounter with the living and loving God. Not through the Mormon. Or maybe God could use the Mormon to bring. I know God could use anyone to bring his 
message to a heart and a soul that is in desperate need of salvation. So someday every person will bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But it's going to be a sad day when people make this confession only when it's the last draw, only when they have finally recognized the inescapable fact that Jesus Christ is alive and he was really Lord and they never accepted him as Lord. That's going to be a sad day. Philippians chapter 2 verses 10 and 11 says, So that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's going to happen. It's written in the Holy Scriptures of God. You might be saying, I don't believe that. Um, some people don't believe in gravity. So does that mean you go on top of a roof and jump off? Is it gravity? gravity doesn't exist. There's always going to be a consequence for the things you don't believe, yet they are true. And the most important thing to believe is God's word. But if you have the free will to say, you know, I don't believe in the word of God. I don't believe that's true. Either way, whether you believe in God and his word or not, I believe that the word is true. But that might not matter to you. But the consequence will still happen. Jump off a roof and say there's no gravity and you will face the consequences. Saying there's no God and that every tongue won't confess and every knee won't bow and say Jesus is Lord. If you deny that and it happens, then the consequences are still there. Amen. Someday every person will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. Scripture says it. I believe it. And I pray you believe it and receive it. Amen. If this um, Bible study is really like prompting you to like investigate this, these claims and these scriptures. Amen. Do it. That's the Holy Spirit of God. Right. Convicting the whole world of sin. That's the Holy Spirit's job. The person of the Holy Spirit convicts the whole world of sin. Not a Christian, not a church, not a preacher. I'm pointing his finger at you or at me and saying we're sinners. No. When you get the conviction, amen, and after the conviction, you might want to confess your uh, sins. You might want to confess your unbelief to a living God. You have nothing to lose by confessing your sin to a living God. Amen. Not through religion, right? Not through uh, false teaching, not through being forced to do it. Amen. No, but if you feel the prompting right now, I believe that's the Holy Spirit tugging your heart and saying, look, I'm speaking. My word is true. Ask me, confess to me, and I will do, and I will forgive. That's the Lord. Amen. The Lord is alive. Jesus Christ is coming back. That's why it's so important that in the meantime, because Jesus is, is here by way of his Holy Spirit living inside of every single Christian, every single Christ follower, every single born again Christian, right? But Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, when the sky cracks one day, he's coming back down on a white horse. And at that point, I really don't think um, there's enough time for anyone at that point to now realize that they need to be saved. That's why it's important to receive the word today. Amen. Admit that you are a sinner. You need a savior. Believe in the word of God. Confess your sins. Confess to Jesus and confess him as your Lord and Savior once you've received the forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15 says it like this. And anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Now, I know for sure. I want to make sure that my name is on the list in the book of life. Can you imagine going to the gates of heaven and they say what is your name and you say it and it's I can't find you on the list and you're like whoa wow what I did miracles in the name of Jesus I prayed in the name of Jesus I went to church uh, for 30 40 years and you know I, I was on a worship team I did this and I did that and your name is not on the list that's possible because if you don't have a connection with Christ if you don't have a relationship with um, the true living God. People have a relationship with religion. They don't have a relationship with Jesus. They don't have a relationship with God. 
we have to check ourselves. Make sure you don't have a relationship with a religion and you're following traditions of men and this, this, and that. There's a way to know that you're connected to Jesus Christ. How do you know that you're connected with Jesus Christ? Well, the God that lives inside of every believer will convict us of sin, will remind us of the the reality of the Lord Jesus Christ, will move us and transform us into the ways of God. You You won't want to sin as much as you did before Jesus entered into your life, before you were forgiven, right? Then you're going to despise the things that you used to love. You're going to hate the things that you used to love. You're going to kind of like go away from the things that used to attract you, that led you down the wrong road. You're going to be transformed. You're going to be renewed, restored, redeemed. You're going to know that you have a relationship with God. And it's not going to be because of the do's and don'ts of religion. It's going to be because of the done work the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ that died for me and you on the cross and rose again on the third day and offered us eternal life through the forgiveness of sin. He's the only one who could forgive sins. Remember, Jesus Christ forgave sin. I believe it was on the day of the Sabbath and the Jews were like, who are you to forgive sin? Only God can forgive sins. And they were totally correct. Yet they did not recognize that the Messiah, the Mashiach Megib, was the Jesus, the Christ, the carpenter's son, right? Was right in front of them. And yet they denied his power. They said that he had no power. And the only, only power he was getting was from demons and all this other stuff. Jesus Christ, the living word, the word that became flesh, was not recognized by the religious people at his time. And today, I believe Jesus Christ is still not recognized by religious people of our day. Amen. So do you have a relationship with religion or do you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? That's very important to discover, to discuss, and to find out. Amen. Because why? Anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life will be thrown into the lake of fire. And at that point, there is no salvation. There is no gospel for you. Amen. And I pray against that. I pray that the enemy will you know, be be rebuked out of your life, be taken away so you could come to your senses and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Tomorrow's not promised, right? I'll leave you with this promise from God. It's found in Romans chapter 9, verse 9. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. I'm sorry. And this is very popular. Amen. One of my favorite verses. Amen. It's part of the three verses that God gave me when we started into ministry. It was Acts 1.8, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Right. And I believe it was uh, yeah Romans 10, 9, Acts 1, 8 and probably Ephesians 3, 20. Amen was another one. But the Lord gave us three. Amen. To act upon, to live upon. Amen. And then when we started the soul winners ministry, me and my wife, he gave us Proverbs 1130. I believe it was. Let me just make sure before I quote, misquote all these things. So many scriptures in my mind. But God is so good amen in all his ways so let's go to the table of contents when you when you're in doubt check it out show the table of contents and we're going to go to uh <clears throat> book of proverbs i believe is 11 30 amen and this is what uh our ministry soul winners inc stands on amen because we know we've seen it with our own eyes when a soul gets saved amen and then you just see what God could do with the life. Amen. The godly are like trees that bear life-giving fruit. And those who save lives are wise. We're not the ones that save lives. That's Proverbs 1130. It's the Jesus Christ inside of every living human that confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The living word is in us. Amen. And the living word is what saves. So the godly are like trees that bear life-giving fruit. That's what it is. The promise from God, and we'll leave it with this. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's the promise of God. Now, you might be saying, well, how about if I'm deaf and mute or mute or if my family members, deaf, how, how will they confess from their mouth? You know, your mind speaks. A deaf person still has a voice and God could hear the heart 
God could hear the mind and the thoughts of every single person, whether you can speak or not. So then you advise them in their mind. Speak to God. For if you confess with your mouth, with your mind, with your heart, with your deeds, God understands it, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The day of salvation is today. Confess. Confess. So all my Uber confessions, amen, that I'll be sharing with you. Never release the names, amen, to keep that in confidence with these people. Some of them know me, some of them don't, amen. But the message is confess to God first and he will forgive your sins. He's the only one that can forgive your sin, amen. God bless you, God keep you. Thank you for hanging out with me for this blaze. Until the next time, always remember that God is good. Peace.